I'm not ashamed. How many Kohathites and Gershonites qualified for the service of the tabernacle? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Numbers on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Numbers chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verses 34 to 41. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Numbers chapter 4, beginning at verse 34. And Moses, Aaron, and the leaders of the congregation numbered the sons of Kohathites by their families and by their father's house, from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, everyone who had entered the service for the work of the tabernacle of meeting. And those who were numbered by their families were 2,750. These were the ones who were numbered of the families of the Kohathites, all who might serve in the tabernacle of meeting, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And those who were numbered of the sons of Gershon by their families and by their father's house, from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, everyone who had entered the service for the work in the tabernacle of meeting, those who were numbered by their families, by their father's house, were 2,630. These are the ones who were numbered of the families of the sons of Gershon, all who might serve in the tabernacle of meeting, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the commandment of the Lord. Over the last four lessons, we've been studying the specific duties of the Levites as it concerned the tabernacle. The house of Aaron served as priests, but there was much more to the service of the tabernacle than just offering sacrifices. When the Israelites broke camp and set up camp, the tabernacle needed to be deconstructed and constructed again. This task was too large for just three men to do, so the three families of Levites were chosen for this service. Due to the arduous labor involved, only men between 30 years old and 50 years old were chosen. The Kohathites, once the holy things had been covered by the priests, were in charge of transporting those things. That would have included the Ark of the Covenant, the Table of Showbread, the Golden Candlestick, and the two altars as well as the utensils. They would have carried these things on their shoulders using the staves provided for that purpose. The Gershonites were responsible for the coverings of the tabernacle and its court. Once the holy things were removed, all of the coverings would have been removed and folded for transport. Once the coverings were removed, the Merarites would then deconstruct the skeleton of the tabernacle and the court. The skeleton included fittings that would be placed in the ground, posts of acacia wood, and bars that kept the tabernacle structure together. This job, I believe, was the most labor-intensive due to the sheer weight of the posts and the fittings. Just how many people would be involved in all of this? Well, recall from chapter 3 that the Kohathites were numbered from one month old and above to be 8,600 males. Now again, only those between the ages of 30 and 50 would be selected for this service, and so a division of the census the Levites would need to be made. And after that division was done, it was found that there was 2,750 men qualified. That meant that only 32% of the males numbered to Kohath qualified. However, this number was completely sufficient for this job. The holy things would not have needed that number of men to do the work. However, I don't believe that any of these men would have gone to waste, as I'm sure there would have needed to be, they would, there would have needed to be shift work to carry these objects as they marched through the wilderness. From the families of Gershon, we learned in chapter 3 that there were 7,500 males or the age of one month old. Of those, 2,630 qualified for the service of the tabernacle represented about 35% of those numbered in chapter 3. Now, the task of caring for and removing the coverings quickly and efficiently obviously would have required more men, so like with the sons of Kohath, any excess men would not have gone to waste. We'll get to the sons of Merari, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. However, before closing, I would like to deal with an issue that I came across during my research for these initial lessons in Numbers, as it, and it concerns the numerical numbers of the Israelites at Sinai. Skeptics of the Bible tend to believe that the numbers of Israel have been inflated by the writers so as to show the power of the nation when in fact they believe Israel numbered in the thousands to low tens of thousands in actuality. The reason for their skepticism involves the lack of evidence that a people this large 
wandered in the wilderness of Sinai for as long as Israel did. Leaving aside the fact that I believe many archaeologists are likely looking in the wrong place, in the Sinai Peninsula instead of the Saudi Arabian Desert, even if there wasn't archaeological evidence, the absence of evidence doesn't disprove something. One may expect to find some remnants of a large people, but the lack of such remnants could be for a variety of reasons, one of which is that we haven't found it yet. Skeptics disbelieved in David, Solomon, Belshazzar because of a lack of evidence, until alas, such evidence has since been unearthed. The construction and deconstruction of the tabernacle in the wilderness was not an easy task. It was to be done efficiently and effectively. The numbers we read of here in Numbers 4 would certainly bolster the conclusion that Israel was as large as has been reported. The only reason to disbelieve this account is not because archaeology has disproved numbers, but because, because one doesn't want to believe the Bible, because if they do, they recognize that God demands something of them, obedience. To the Christian, though, we can have faith that the God who is able to save us from sin is also able to accurately relate to us the size of his people Israel, here in the book of Numbers. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Numbers chapter 4, verses 42 to 49, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.